everyone, I'm Jen Houston, owner of the Artsy Partsy Gallery here in Canmore, Alberta. I'm a full-time independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada, and I'm so excited to get to join uh, you for your Friday evening. We were supposed to have uh, coffee and cars on Wednesday nights, of course, but Facebook was having a rough time, I guess, and uh, so we moved that night over to tonight. So I'm excited that you can join me. Uh, when you pop on, please say hello. Tell me where you're from. Tell me all about yourself because I'll be babbling about myself. <laughs> so tonight, I just wanted to start off by showing some cards that I got in the mail this week. I always love happy mail just as much as you. So let me flip my screen. Whoopsie. One day I'll be able to do this quickly. I hope. <laughs> all right there we go all right so the first one came from Alyssa all the way from Wisconsin isn't that pretty she used one of the designs that we used for the creative escape and um, I love the colors and I love this oh these butterflies with the foil paper the lovely lipstick in the the grapefruit grove looks so nice and this ribbon with the little polka dots is just great got your happy mail Janet great I'm so glad hi Kim so and she, look she puts a uh, fanciness on the inside too and she jazz up the envelope here look how pretty and look at all those butterflies it's just so nice you see this in the mail and oh you're like oh wow they even you know went for the effort, through the effort to, uh, you know, decorate the envelope in the inside. Wow, I feel extremely special. <laughs> Don't worry, Kim, people do it all the time. It's all good. My mom decided that she would spell it that way with the two ends, so I've just kind of continued with that one, so. And I got one from Nita. Look at this fun design. My first ever St. Patrick's Day card. I'm so excited. And Kim, this was apparently your design. She she gave you credit for this. And uh, yeah, so look at that. She decorated the inside too and gave a little shamrock on the outside. So there we go. I'm so excited. That's, that's so much fun. So thank you, ladies. That's so sweet. All right. Tonight, we are going to work with tea together. And ooh, try not to blind you with that bright light there. So this stamp set is one of those ones that, you know, is kind of a classic that you kind of want to have around for, you know, if somebody is sick, um, for a tea party, for wedding, the bridal showers, whatnot. Um, it's one of those classics that I think you'll use over and over. Um, so I'm, I know I'm loving it. And there's lots of techniques that you can use to jazz it up, make it really funky and fun. Or you could just have it kind of subdued and mellow, which is uh, great too. That's kind of more my style. <laughs> but so let's show you what I did here. So last, I think I showed this online. I made this Mother's Day card and I'm telling you, uh, thank you, Karen. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you too. I guess I better dig out the green for the next couple of days. Green clothes. To think about that. I don't know if I have any. Um, so I made this teapot for Mother's Day. Um, I used um, this. This was the pattern paper from Petal. Uh, no, no. The Painted Seasons bundle. Flooded Wisconsin. Uh oh. That's that doesn't sound good. Is your house okay? Hopefully. We had a big flood in uh, Brandon, where I used to be from a long time ago, and we actually had to relocate our school to the university. It was a disaster. So yes, flooding is not fun. Thank you, Karen, for sharing. That's awesome. Um, this country floral embossing folder, I tell you. That is a classic. So if you haven't seen the cards that I've made with that recently, you need to check out my blog or you can kind of go back in Facebook and have a look at the pictures. I'm just, I'm in love with it. 
So yes, I stamped this teapot onto that Painted Seasons um, paper and I used crumb cake with a blender pen just to kind of give it some um, shadows and whatnot. But, oh, it's cute. I like it. No problem, Karen. Hi, Tanya. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? We're on a different night here, so we'll see who is able to pop on and who, uh, it's not a good time for them. All right, and here was the other one. So there again, I had done um, embossing with that country floral set. And on this one, I actually used the aqua painter and painted some of the flowers, but I used that as the backgrounds for my tea set. Love it. <laughs> and then I went back, same again, with the um, crumb cake and the blender pen and just kind of gave some shadows there. But oh, what a stunner. I just love that set. So, oh, and this one was from the All Adorned. That's the other uh, free set. I thought, you know, that is brilliant for envelopes or for the inside of cards. Just that dainty little, you know, emblem there. So, good to hear, Tanya. That's awesome. My house is okay. You're on a hill. Fond du Lac River had an ice jam causing massive flooding and evacuations. Oh, no. That's not fun. I'm sorry that's happening in your, your area. Hopefully it resolves itself quickly so you don't, uh, so everyone can get back to normal because that is not great. Wow. So the fun part about this Tea Together set is that you can buy the stamp set, but right now, if you purchase $120 worth of goodies, it's celebration time, and so that means you can choose the tea time framelits that cut out all these items for free if you spend $120. Hello, Michelle. Another Michelle. Awesome. So it's a pretty good deal, I think. Um, it definitely helps with the teapot and the teacup because it cuts out those finicky little inside pieces. Now I, <laughs> I tried to cut this inside bit out with scissors. Disaster. It looked like I did, so it wasn't good. Hello, Lori. I'm glad you were able to make it tonight. All right. So how's everybody's weather other than poor Melissa? I'm telling you, it's been beautiful here. The snow has been melting. I'm just, I, I'm loving the hair, loving hearing, loving to hear the sound of drip, 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 drip. So it's just, everything's, the snow is melting. Love it. Hello, Chrissy. Hi, Wendy. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. So our first card. I got the idea from H Made Boutique. I want to give them credit. I finally wrote down. I always look through Pinterest sometimes to get some ideas. I find an idea, I, you know, use it, and then I, I go back to look for the, you know, name of who who I kind of borrowed some ideas from, and of course you can't find it again. So I'm getting <laughs> getting better at writing down those names right at the beginning. So this plan is to. Use soft sea foam as our card base. Hot and sunny. Nice. Yeah, I've heard it's been nice there, Tanya. Yeah, that's awesome. Gingham Gala. I like these two colors together. Isn't that neat? So I'm going to start off by gluing that down. Hot and sunny. You guys always have hot and sunny. <laughs> I'm excited when it's, you know, above zero degrees Celsius. <laughs> That's just thrilling for me. But yeah, you guys have hot and sunny all the time. So that probably gets exhausting. All right. So that's going to be our first layer. Now I went ahead and colored this teapot. Isn't that cute? So I stamped the flowers on there and um, colored them in. I used the soft sea foam, mossy meadow and balmy blue colors. I also used some ivory and a little bit of crumb cake, I believe. So I thought I would get that done, get it cut out because 
who wants to sit and watch me color every day. <laughs> Little doll. So now I just left the teacup to color in. And so I wanted to show you a few tricks that I, I use when stamping those flowers on because as you'll see, um, the flower has stems and I didn't really want the stems on the handle of the teapot. So what I did was kind of made myself a little masking idea. So I just cut a piece of scrap paper got my Sahara sand, just light, 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 light. Up north, we're plus five. Woo, nice. What's the temperature, Kevin? Three. Three here, you're beating us. <laughs> Heat wave up north. So as you can see, I've kind of made myself that little mask so that the flowers don't end up going out onto something else that I don't really want it to go on onto. Um, let's tuck around maybe on this side. And stamp down. Didn't totally fill in, but once we color, it'll be just fine. And I think that's all I'm going to do for the teacup. I'm not sure if I should. No, I don't think so. Okay. You get the point though, how this masks. Thank you, Karen. Okay, so I'm using the Stampin' Blends. I quite like them. Um, if you don't have Stampin' Blends, of course you can use watercolor pencils. You can use the Stampin' Right markers. Lots of options. I think I'm gonna start with the roses first. All right, so balmy blue. Well, yesterday I went to get my eyes tested. And apparently they are still still the same, even though I, I don't know, I need a little more light and uh, can't see quite as well as I used to. Everyone used to like tease me because I would, back in the day, have uh, be able to rate, read things from far away. I just, my eyes were incredible, way better than 2020. And now it's like... <laughs> Good old aging, right? Okay, so as you can see, I'm using the light version of Balmy Blue. I just color the whole thing in, and then I go back with the darker color, and kind of the farther away bits, that is kind of where I'm adding some dark. And then I go back with my light, and just kind of blend them together. So yes, I ended up buying glasses, new glasses anyways, because I figure I want some fun glasses. So, you know, like, I think it's Coco Chanel, you know those big, round, dark, that's what I got. I like, I'm sure people like walked into the store and, you know, saw them and, and probably howled because they're so out there. But I love them. So hopefully I'll have them by next week and you can see what I look like. What's not fair? Kevin also went and got his appointment done and he got glasses. His that we picked out are, I like them. They look stunning on them. But they aren't, yeah, they aren't fun like what I got, I guess. So now he's moping because he, you know, didn't get fun ones. I also went on, well, all I was going there for was to look for glasses for computer and down here. So office use, right? Uh, because this bifocal business is ridiculous. So I, I love them so much that I decided, no, they'll be my all time, all the time glasses. <laughs> yeah. But um, where was I going with that? I still need a pair for for computer to, you know, looking down. So I went on Zenny Optical again today and I went and got myself an inexpensive pair for for that use. So we'll see what those look like on. I've used them before and been in happy with what I got. I mean, you can tell that they were a little more flimsy than the you know, ones you might get at the optometrist, but really, 
I, eh, for the price, go for it. You can get some fun, unique pieces, that's for sure. Okay, now I'm going back with these, the dark mossy meadow, just to kind of add some little pieces. Okay, next I'm going to add my soft sea foam. So I had colored the teapot, where's my teapot here? Over here, um, I had a set like this with the soft sea foam, but I believe it had pink flowers, something very similar to this. So that's kind of what inspired me to try this kind of idea on my teapot. <laughs> All right, let's start coloring the teapot portion, or the teacup, pardon me. So the good thing about alcohol-based markers is they tend to not leave lines, which is awesome. And you can kind of blend the colors together. I like to color in circles. I don't know, my art instructor told me, or taught me that, that if you color in circles, you tend to have less lines as well. So just an idea. I really like this soft seafoam color. It's my kind of muted oh, <laughs> feel. Uh, uh oh. Did I use the dark color? I sure did. Whoops. Well, I'm going to come back with the light and give it some shadows. No, I think I'm going to have to go back in with the dark. Shoot. I will. No one will know, right? No one will. Meh. No one will care. So I'm just going to go back, add a little darkness, and blend that in with the lighter version. So what are the plans for the weekend for everyone? everyone? Um, I'm also going to do the dish. What's that called? Saucer. I can tell I'm having a flare-up. Fibro flare-up. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Karen. You need to do a coloring class the next time you're back in Manitoba. <laughs> yeah? Oh, I just think this is standard. You fill in the lines. I don't know. These blends make it pretty pretty easy to look uh, professional, that's for sure. The blending capabilities. Especially if you use the right color at the right time. Hopefully I didn't do that again. No, I did the light. Good, good. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of give it some shadows. So of course it's going to be darker behind, or behind it. And it goes to the center. So it gets darker as you go closer to the center. Okay, and let's see. For the underneath, I'm going to use ivory. I had hoped that it would kind of look like a little bit of a um, goldish color. I can't what I do here yep no nope. and then I'm gonna use crumb cake I like to use crumb cake for the kind of the shadow bits it's, it's kind of you know that color that yeah I prefer it as opposed to gray instead of gray it's maybe a little more soft I'm going in afterwards with the, the color lifter and kind of blending it so it's not such a stark line. I could also come back in here with the white since I did do um, dark by accident and that'll help blend it out. It doesn't actually erase the color, I think it just moves it a little bit. 
Um, let's see, we need some more. Oh, this is crumb cake. Let me check. Ivory. This is crumb cake. So I know I'm going to have a shadow kind of in here. I'm going to have a shadow a little bit over there. Oh, and I'll have one under the. Janice, hello. I'm going to relaxing and diamond painting. I'm working for a week. Oh, more diamond painting. I saw your last one. That, thank you for sharing that with us. That was pretty neat. I had never done that before. So it looks like fun. Okay, good enough. And then I'm going to See what I did here? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> oh yes, as I was saying, I think I've got a my fibro flare up here. I uh, my arms are just killing me, and uh, I am beyond exhausted. I've had a nap the last. Well, I had a nap today, and um, was it yesterday? The day before? I can't, not yesterday because I was at the eye appointment. But, oh, I've been pretty wiped. There, just adding a little bit of gold. Nope, not that one. White. And I'm a little foggy. <laughs> I lose my words a little quicker than normal and which is never fun. So they don't come to mind when they're supposed to. Oh well. Alright, I think that's done. Coloring is complete. So now I'm going to use this framelit to cut that out and as I said it cuts that in between part where that handle is so here's my big shot let's get it all set up here I don't have the magnetic platform on I just have the regular one so if you don't have the magnetic one you're more than welcome to get a sticky note and kind of put it uh, over top of the frame so it holds it in place I just like to wing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm too lazy for that. Okay, just go with it. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so our next step, before I glue things down, is I have a piece of mossy meadow. That's why I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping I wasn't having a, you know, senior moment when I was, or I was supposed to use these stamps on something else. I'm, yikes. Embossing, buddy. Very important. Okay, and before I get doing that, I'm going to actually stick this in the corner rounder. Now, this isn't a Stampin' Up! one. I, to be honest, hate the Stampin' Up! one. And so I'm using this one um, just to make it a little bit of a round corner there I'm going to emboss this little saying here love is a warm cup of tea do you guys like tea I like tea soft and pretty yes so I'm gonna make this like a little bit of a tab almost coming from the top get out my white embossing powder Doo -doo -doo. looks good fits well get out my heat tool which is oh sheesh trapped under the cart's wheel there we go that'll help good you know what I'm so jealous I know this is horrible but 
the top demonstrator in the world is actually in Canmore this weekend. She is with, um, what's her name? <laughs> the, uh, not Pink Buckaroo. Um, why can't I think of it? Anyways, so she is with Allison Akamitsu at the hotel and they're having their um, fun retreat. I know. I could have gone, but I was too poor. Poor to go this time. Maybe next time. So I will just have my crafting fun here with you guys, which is pretty awesome. You like herbal teas, but can't stand ordinary tea. Really? Okay. I'm a black tea fan. English breakfast. So somebody else said English breakfast the other day. Uh, was it Kylie? Can't remember. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to put this underneath after. I think that's what I will do. And I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. So what I did was I used the stitched framelits for the inside. I don't know if you can see that stitching there. I will have to try English breakfast. I can't say I've ever tried it or paid attention when I <laughs> drank it. It's, it's a black tea, is it not? I think. We have so many teas. Oh yes, I would miss this. Yeah, no, I... Not that I'm used to fiber, you know, the pain and whatnot, but it's just, you gotta keep going, right? It's, I will rest later. And yes, this is kind of, you know, it's not stressful. It's relaxing and fun, right? So I don't want to miss that. Okay, so I'm going to just lay this layer down like that. And now I'm going to stick this little tab up from underneath like that. And then let's get this just going to put the teapot and the tea cup. Ooh, which way? Hmm. I think I want that handle showing that it's like fancy where this little spout is not eventful. So, okay, so here's, here's something to consider. Um, this side over here is going to, you can just put some snail and it will sit nicely. Underneath this section, I'm going to have to put dimensionals because of course, otherwise it's gonna be sinking into kind of that little hole there. So let's put some dimensionals on this section. If I can remember where. <laughs> um, let's put a little, one at the end of the spout. Where's my oh, in the embossing powder? That's good. <laughs> Sheesh. All right, and then let's run some snail over on this side. And the handles on the bottom. Take that off. Crafting is good therapy for sure. Yes, with health issues, absolutely, and with my depression too. That. Um, is a good thing to get my mind off things. Absolutely. And it, you know, like, it's kind mm -hmm. of given me a purpose, you know? Um, for a long time, you just kind of are bummed and whatnot. And, and so knowing that I can easily brighten somebody else's day and the whole act of giving, right? It, it kind of, you know, it does something to you as well. So yeah, and to get up every morning, and um, I've got, you know, card class ladies relying on me. <laughs> so, gotta get up, gotta get dressed, gotta get going. So yes, absolutely. This has been a lifesaver for sure. Especially when I had to quit teaching, because of course you can't teach little children and be in pain and anxiety, and panic attacks, and 
and uh, being, yeah, can't think about your words and whatnot. Oh, look at that. Sorry. Just <laughs> go. saw this and I thought it was amazing. I love it. Isn't that cute? Neat. All right, so on the inside, I went ahead and decorated. I had an extra strip of the gingham gala, so I thought, oh, let's do that. So yes, when I quit teaching, te that was a hard pill to swallow. I had decided when I was five, I was gonna be a teacher my first day of kindergarten. That's kind of what I was gonna be. And um, went towards that my entire life. And then once, you know, 20 years are over, I'm like, now what am I going to do with myself? And so Stampin' Up! was here. And so that uh, definitely has been, like I say, a lifesaver. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Isn't that neat? Oh, I love it. I love those soft colors, too. They're so pretty. There. Cool. Car number one is complete. Now, let me make sure I've got no more. There. Okay. Move it on. Can you give me some hearts if you have this set? Or if you tried it? This one. I'm gonna move this down here. Too many things. All right. So this one, I have the inside bits and the outside bits. So I have my card base with very vanilla and a layer of very vanilla and I have a layer of um, with the wood green paper I thought oh this will be pretty and then I have um, I'm going to do my teacup out of designer series paper so instead of you know stamping on things Stamping on paper, just plain old paper without a pattern. I'm going to do it this, this way. Oh, you guys are so kind. Hi, Sandy. I think I said hi. Hope If I didn't, I meant to. <laughs> I saw you pop on there. It's a good fit. You still get to teach. Yes, I am still teaching. You all are much quieter than the children. I'll just say that. I get to talk and I don't have to go shh. I don't even have to get out my wrinkle. You know, my mean teacher face. <laughs> you guys are perfect students. Yes, if I had to write a report card, A plus is all around, I tell you. Yes, so look at there. So that'll be an instant easy teacup, which I'm going to cut out with the framelit. No sense cutting with scissors if you don't have to. See that little piece pops out there cute and then what I was going to do is I'm going to put flowers inside the teacup so I have already pre-colored some Ooh, so I used rich razzleberry and mango melody our noses don't run either oh and you don't need your shoes tied <laughs> my son calls it my angry face yep that that teacher wrinkle I used to always say don't make me show you my wrinkle so mm -hmm. i don't have to show my wrinkle it's wonderful now i just went willy-nilly maybe i don't need any more flowers wondering about I think I might go in with some a blender pen and some crumb paint just to give it a little dimension Ooh, let's not tip over I was gonna color one more flower for you but maybe I'll color it and add it to the inside of the card maybe that's maybe that's what I'll do all right so I'm gonna I say gonna a lot don't I <laughs> it's not even a word 
I'm going to, once I get my big Coco Chanel glasses, I have to speak properly. <laughs> I'm going to dip this in my crumb cake and where the shadows would be, kind of give it a little bit of a, give it a color. Just to make it stand out a little. to watch with the blender pen because it is um, kind of filled with liquid so if you keep going over the same spot too many times it can uh, start balling your paper because it's actually tearing ripping the paper and they're done that do it quite often get into this bottom piece with a little more darkness because of course it's under the cup and I'm going to go in here. Hopefully you can see a little bit more definition. And behind here. A little there. Just a little something. Rich Razzleberry and Mango Melody would be a be good tea flowers. Yeah. Although I do not like hibiscus. And that's what often makes the tea that red color, right? Just my thing, I don't know. A little bit of shading makes such a difference. Yeah, just, you know, adds a little something, right? Okay, so let's get this tea cup glued down. Oh, let's let's assemble this card. <laughs> okay, let's start from scratch here. Let's put this layer onto the card base. And then the wood grain layer over top. I like the darker end down towards the bottom. And this is just a fine, fine border around the outside. And this, place it in the center. Ooh, I see a sparkle. Wake up, Stella. I could put some on the flowers. All right. Let's see, I guess flower, or the leaves would probably be facing down. Going to going up, gonna, I gonna. <laughs> Sheesh. Yikes. Let's go in with this one. Ooh, that covers up that little leaf bit. Wonder if I can still make it show. Go like that. And then, well, I can pop some up too. Place that over there. And a little yellow. Maybe tuck it under. A bit. I want to keep that rose kind of. Oh no, I don't want that to be the same as that other flower. There. Now I wonder if I do need that other. Nah. Okay. Let's go. Why did I have this little stamp here? 
maybe in case I needed some. Oh, what was I going to do here? Way back on Wednesday, I had a plan. <laughs> maybe I was just going to rough up the outsides a little bit here. Okay, let's go back to coloring. So this rose, I plan to use Daffodil Delight. And just give it some orange on the tips. Because of course you don't have to just color with the one color. So I don't need, you know, I know it's common to use Daffodil Delight, the dark and the, you know, light version. But you can mix up the colors. You don't have to just stick with the color family. So I'm going to go back in with the Daffodil Delight and try to whittle some of that out a little. It's pretty stark. Oh, it's the dark pumpkin pie. That's probably why I should have probably used the light version, but it's in my drawer and you know. So Wendy and Chrissy, forgive my dumbness, um, do you guys have like a, not a winter season, I know that, but do you have a season that it's a lot cooler than what it is right now? some dark. I have a rose in my garden that is those colors. Nice. Way back in Manitoba where I had my amazing garden. Oh, we had the ketchup and mustard rose. So it was kind of similar-ish to this that it had um, yellow on the inside and red on the tips. We had that one and we have the Canada 150 one and oh never alone rose yeah we had some roses in our humongous garden which i've had to give up okay i'm just gonna run through this through the big shot cut this little rose out up here to make it a little off-centered so I'm going to yes autumn is lovely cool mild weather okay and so autumn is generally I guess when we, it's coming into your autumn then so you're actually thankful for autumn where we're kind of thankful for summer <laughs> interesting I'm just trimming this a little bit because it was a little cockeyed and it made one edge a little bit thicker than the other side so I mean you don't it doesn't bother you don't worry about it but I just want to fix it a little bit there should I add it in here I think that's too much well So 
just going to put the little the little saying. Hmm. Maybe it would balance that out a little. Yeah, let's go for it. Why not? Tuck it a little bit under. There we go. Now, for the saying, it says, thanks for your friendship. And this actually comes from Home to Roost. They have such beautiful sayings in that, uh, that stamp set. The rooster, eh, I don't know. <laughs> doesn't do it for me but whatever so happy to have cooler weather now but around 80s wow that's still pretty toasty I'm a Celsius girl of course here in in Canada but still that's still pretty toasty you appreciate all of them yeah oh I will say that uh, being in the mountains here and that was one of the most stunning September was the most stunning month ever I, the colors of the trees and we have these evergreen trees they're called they're called larch trees and they're kind of like evergreens they're like Christmas trees however they turn this bright golden yellow in the fall and they lose all their needles it's so neat so that between that color and then all of the birch trees and the, with their like orangey reds and they turn purples and oh it was something else okay thanks for your friendship wonder yeah we'll go up there let's put some dimensionals on behind 28 yeah 25 to 28 wow it's still pretty toasty for you does it does it get cooler than that yet Hopefully. Hi, Alice. I like the words in that set too. Yeah, and the font of it. Yeah, but it's really pretty. I guess you gotta throw something nice in there besides the rooster. <laughs> it's somebody else's thing. It's just not mine. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see, what am I taking? I wanted pearls. Because this just looks like kind of a pearls card, right? Yeah. Get out my take your pick tool. I'm going to go over here. Um, oh my goodness, that is still hot, hot, hot for this Manitoba. I know, right? That's, wow. There. Perfect. I like it. Put these back in my case because, man, oh man, I had more <laughs> diamond rhinestones and pearls and things all over my table. I'm finding them in my purse. I go to, you know, get my wallet on my purse and I've got these diamonds. <laughs> so I decided to put them in the stamp case. <laughs> All right, so let's add our inside. And all I did was just add a little piece of whoop, the wood grain paper. I keep calling it wood grain paper, but it's actually wood texture paper. I was writing up a tutorial the other day and I'm like, where's the wood grain paper? I can't see the... And sure enough, it's wood textures. <laughs> Love the teacup flowers and wood grain. They are awesome together. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, getting out my boober buster here. Got a little glue where I don't want it. There we go. And then, of course, for the envelope too, I just put a little strip of the wood grain. So here we go. Number two, it's complete. I like it. All right, I'm just gonna get my Simply Chamois and clean those little stamps off so I don't get brown everywhere. Okay, who's got a Simply Chamois? Thumbs up if you've got a Simply Chamois. The thing is incredible, I love it. 
so much more than the stamp and scrub. Oh, I was gonna use, hey, back the phone up here just a minute. I wanted my week of Stella. I love Stella. Just adds that little something, hidden something when you pick up the card and you tilt it and it's like, oh, what's this? Not much, just a little something hidden there. Yeah, that's all I want. You probably can't see it, but just a little, a little twist of something. I just did that today because I was having the same problems. Oh dear. Love with the wood DSP makes it pop. I know, right? It's just like cabin. Homey. Neat. All right. Third card. I had to go in the toolbox for this one. Don't worry. I can do it. You can do it. <laughs> okay. So, let me put these aside. The inside. So I've got my Whisper White card base. And I have, of course, the butterfly paper. You gotta get it while it's around because it's going to be gone in a couple weeks. Uh, that was gonna go there. This was going to go here, but this was going to go underneath, like so. I'm just reminding myself, sorry. And this, I was gonna stick on the side. And then, so I did the teacups, and I did use Flirty Flamingo, Mango Melody, and Melon Mambo. And what I did, I don't know if you can tell, but I used my dauber with the same colored ink just to kind of give it a little something, a little bit of shadows. Dissecting, not directing. I was thinking of directing my stamp and scrub and putting my chamois in it. Your chamois is quite a bit smaller. Get, I can send you a case. Or if you have an old stamp set, it's of course the exact same thing. You can buy the um, the cases, which I'm finding handy for things like, you know, the dimensionals and whatnot. And they actually have places on um, Pinterest and whatnot where you can print out the lovely covers, the labels. So this one you could, you know, rhinestone and it makes the lovely, you know, matching stampin' up kind of look for the covers. And you can get one for the Simply Chamois and whatnot. So if you want one, I will bring you one because I've got lots because I use them all the time. So, I don't know, it's just kind of, it, it fits perfectly in there. The Stampin' Scrub, it'll be a little too narrow and you kind of want it to sit nicely. So, have to go, thank you for, ah, that's the sweetest thing ever. Thank you, Janice. Thanks. <laughs> How kind. All right, so here's my Mango Melody, and I have my um, Melon Mambo, and so I'm just going to show you how I use the Flirty Flamingo with my Dauber, just to kind of give it some a little bit of something. Some shadows. Not much, just something, right? To make it look a little more dimensional than just a flat color. Okay, next I'm going to cut off the saucer because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pile these teacups on top of each other. So we're just going away with the saucer. Actually, I could probably go away with that little bottom piece as well but we'll just leave it it'll be a little piece that we can use to kind of tuck behind the other one okay so next thing this is why I needed the toolbox oh that would be nice I will do that it will make things look nice I know it does and then you can put it in with all your stamp sets and it just blends right in right it's not uh, something odd or out of the ordinary Okay, so here's my my blade. I had a little craft one, I don't know where I put it, but what you need to do is just trim along 
that black line, we're going to make kind of like a little opening. Okay. I'm scared to like go through my <laughs> all my paper layers here and into my plastic bit underneath. There we go. So I don't know if you can see that, how I've kind of opened it. And that will help me to stick these inside. So they look a little more stacked. Okay. And so of course I'm going to have to do that with the Melon Mamba one. This is as handy as I get. <laughs> and that one will go sit inside there. Let's make sure it's cut over here. There we go. Okay, let's assemble. So, I love the back of this paper, all the black and whites. Just makes colors pop when you use it. All right. So of course you could always use um, the DSP pattern paper to you know add different patterns on all the teacups and stack them. Um, oh, lots of options, right? So I'm just using this little strip that was left on the end, my four by four. Put it in the middle, and then I'm going to use this. I think I'm going to cut it in half. I don't really need. The entire doily so no sense wasting the whole thing we'll just use part of it and I just use snail because I'm lazy like that and place it here good and let's glue this down See, I got something on this this piece, one side of the piece, but that's okay. The magic of paper, you can use both sides. I think I'll, maybe I'll move it over a little, make it a little lopsided. Add a little excitement with those cups. Now I wonder if we popped all these up. That might be kind of fun. I'm going to put birthday wishes. I think I'm going to stamp that down at the bottom and then I'll kind of know how how tucked in I need the cups, how um, how high we can go with the cups. Birthday wishes. Where are the pups tonight? They're right down at my feet here. Of course, I don't know. I guess they're they're behaving themselves today. Man, it's sure nice to walk them and not have to uh, pick them up constantly. Because Bud's, you know, like a little princess. Oh yeah, I was going to pop them up. <laughs> anyway. I want to make it, them a little crooked so they look she tuck there. Yep, I think so. There. Cute. What do you think? This color is just, when I look at the screen, it reminds me of Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I don't know. These random things that come into my brain, I tell you. All right, so for the inside, I'm just going to use, going to use one of these pieces. Of course, these are all little scrap pieces that kind of are at the end. I love it, chop it. So I 
cut everything by four inches by four, five and a quarter. And um, that way I end up with these little bits so that I uh, can put them on the envelopes on the inside of the cards. Oh, man, that's not going to work. It's a little shorter. <laughs> oh, well. Let's just trim it off. I'm so glad I got Dear Doily stamp set and framelits because they're not making anymore. No kidding. I didn't get that one and I kind of regret it. It, it, it was a beautiful set. I thought, oh, it's, it looks too fussy. It looks, but to me, I don't think it was. I think it was a pretty easy set to use for sure. So, oh, look at that. So cute. Neat. There's that one, and we're on to our last card. What time is it? 8.02. Oh dear. Slow tonight. All the coloring, I guess. Let me get this thing out of the way and tuck it back into its little safety house here. Okay, this one. Now, if you don't want the teas, teacups or the teapot, you can still use this set because it has those beautiful flowers. So here's my, what my plan is for this. Look at this. So I did it already with the envelope flap and the inside. So I stamped and embossed with white and then I got out my daubers because I'm too lazy to color in super fancy and just kind of mushed around. And of course, it's kind of like crayon resist like you did in school, where you know you use white crayon and then you paint over top and then it doesn't show, it, it still shows through. So that is the plan. We're going to use our flowers to make a beautiful picture with the embossing. Okay, Versamark. First Versamark is that clear ink that's really, really sticky. Oh, almost forgot. Where's that embossing buddy over here? Another pile, a big pile. I'm doing that right now using the wood stamp cases for storage, perfect, yeah. Yeah, there, there are the wood cases which are a little thicker, which I've heard they're getting rid of because they're not going to be using wood mount um, stamps anymore. But yeah, they're great for storage. It's so hard to know what to choose. Can't afford everything. Exactly. No kidding. Oh, wow. I really love that effect with the flowers. Yeah, hey? Eh? Just a different idea. Okay, so it kind of lends itself to being in the corner. So that's where it's going to go. I'm going to put one there and put one here. And then we'll go from there. If it needs more, we'll add more. And I have my white embossing powder. And the bottom one here. Looks good. Now heat that up. start with this and see how it goes. I'm going to start two Versamarks out here. All right, so on my last flower, I used petal pink kind of for the inside. So I'm just going over top, right over top of my flower. You probably can't see the flower because it's white on white, but as soon as we start coloring, it's going to pop. And the Highland Heather. I just don't want it super, super dark. 
I'm just going around the outsides. See how easy this is with those silly dollars. <laughs> I was shouting to the screen, embossing money. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. I must have heard you. <laughs> I, I never used to use that thing. Never. Once again, my laziness prevails, right? And, uh, Someone, I forget who was telling me, and she's like, you need to use that. That's a stamping up tool. You need to use it. So sure enough, I used it. I'm like, oh, this is kind of brilliant. <laughs> it works so much better. Okay, there's my flowers. So the plan was to just put this in the center with that saying of, um, I'm so glad you're part of my story. I like that one. I'm going to use the Highland Heather all right let's get this in the center preferably good, good. now I wonder what about if we added I need some more polka dot ribbon. I'm out after this. I love this ribbon. It just goes with everything. Of course you can color it, but I just like it. Just a little something, right? Okay. Let's see what happens here. This might just help to frame the oval a little bit. Or, or make it grounded. Good. And then let's get out the dimensionals behind this oval to pop it out. I tell you, if I ever get if I ever get kidnapped, just follow the trail of dimensional. <laughs> find me right away nope. honestly they end up everywhere mint macaron as a little border I didn't know about putting these two colors together but who was it um, I think it was Karen who was putting purples with greens I thought, Ooh, that looks good so it inspired me to give this a whirl here Ooh, you know what I just thought of? Just a last minute idea. Gotta love those, right? I am like that with my with the cuts, breaking out the big shot and getting the dies unstuck from their paper. Just break out the punch of the scissors, yeah. This is what I just came up with. I just thought of this. Why not take this and I'm just going to going to stamp it with Versamark kind of all around the outside so it's a little bit subtle it's there but it's not in your face I don't know can you see that just as a little added something on that background piece Come back. I'm not going to emboss it but you could but just as a little Hidden something. So it's not just plain. I like it. There. Now we'll put this down. Oh yeah, I'm glad I did that. I like it. Gotta like those spur of the moment ideas. Can you see that background now? Just gives it a little something besides just plain old paper. Cool. And of course.
course, I did the same thing on the inside, exactly what I did here. This is a quick card, especially when you just use those. Oh, oh I have some time for pearls. <laughs> My paper is sticky. to hide my rips. <laughs> and I think we should add some on the front because, you know, between the buffalo check and pearls, I think this is my, my thing. <laughs> go here is that too much too much leave it alone all right so I glued that to the inside and I have my envelope flap neat eh so you don't even have to use the tea cups and the whatnot if you don't want to all right love the purple and green together Karen thank you <laughs> Definitely a win with the colors. Thank you. Love it. The background is lovely too. Very soft and subtle. Yep. I love those colors, but I'm so not soft and subtle. I guess I'm soft in that respect, but subtle, no, I tend to be brazen and too bold and don't know when to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but we all have our skills, right? <laughs> so let's just review. I want to go back and look what we did. I've forgotten already. Oh yes, this one. Pretty, pretty. And the wood. And this one. And where was number four? Where was number four? Did I only do three? I'm sure I did number Oh yes. With all the fun teacups stacked. I see it. So there. There was my boldness. <laughs> there we go. So you'll have to let me know which one's your favorite. The tea set, the flower teacup, the stack of teacups, or the dauber flowers. <sighs> uh, thank you. Oh, a true inspiration. Oh, Lori Pandolfi. <laughs> oh, you look, aw, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you guys are the kindest people ever. You're going to make me cry. Okay, no crying. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for joining me on my Friday. I had a blast. You're always fun to chit chat with, and you're so kind. So enjoy your sense of humor. Thanks. Aw, oh, thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, tomorrow is National Quilt Day. And so in honor of that, our class on Monday is going to be a little quiltish. So I got all those kits made up this afternoon and we're ready to roll. So be on the lookout for the class on Monday. Top two you like the best, eh? Yeah. First one, the flower one, I like that. Yeah, they're all be, oh, thank you. Thank you, ladies. You guys are awesome. Lori's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Lori. All right. Well, thanks so much. If this, um, if you do not have this set yet and you live in Canada, I would love to make sure you get this set. I am having, here, let me pop this on the screen since I got it actually ready. So if you, if you place an order this week and in this order, you have this tea together set. I will send you the tutorial, so all the measurements um, and pictures of how to make these cards, um, send that to you in the mail or as an email, whichever you prefer. Um, second option is if you place an order of $60 or more, of course, you're going to get your free um, celebration item as well. I will send you this um, 
the tutorials for these. And lastly, of course, if you place a $120 order, you can get those matching framelits that match this set. So, and of course, I will send you the dimensions. So, just something to think about, but this is the only, this is my own little deal that I'm giving out. So, it is going to end next Tuesday because then next Wednesday, of course, I'm going to have a new deal for you. All right, ladies. I seem to, where's my face? Have a great weekend. I will talk to you soon. Bye.